PodSound School presents Content Heavy, the podcast that helps online business owners make better content and more money. Let's Heavy up. Hello, amigo. Amigazo de mi alma. Uh -huh. Welcome to another Content Heavy episode. Better content, more money, brought to you by the Pod Sound School. I'm Veronica. And I'm Studio Steve. This podcast is for you. It's for online business owners or even those who might be content creation curious. This episode is going to be a really good one. We're going to get into the dark side, the ugly side of being your own boss, specifically like being your own boss as a content creator or doing content creation as your own boss, because we all see the pretty stuff. Yeah. We all see, <laughs> you know, after the editor, after the, the makeup. There's and... a lot of skin retouching software as well. <laughs> Beyond just IG uh, filters. filters. There's one we if like I a lot. If I don't have the 20 filters on me, I'm not happy. Yeah, exactly. Okay. <laughs> you're likely right now, if you're watching this, this podcast, this is also a video podcast, you will see beauty box <laughs> is being applied to our faces, which <laughs> is really nice. It smooths out your complexion. Anyhow, we're not talking about the prettier side or even hacks about how to look more pretty inside of your content creation. In this episode, we're going to talk about some of the ugly truths that go into being your own boss, working from home, being a content creator, all mm -hmm. of that stuff. And we're going to get started right now. Let's do it. Okay. So, Veronica, in my normal organizational fashion, I just have a couple little notes in my phone. Okay, good. Hey, not like Veronica's over, she overdoes it with the notes. Ay, right? like con la friga. 16 different subpoints underneath each point. <laughs> okay. This, I'm just randomly putting points together. Uh. But this is pretty good. And I think uh, <laughs> we actually talked about this yesterday and we have a few notes of things that we want to bring up. Like what mm -hmm. is ugly, right? And so yeah. I'm gonna just mention. And let me them. tell you, we wouldn't do anything else with with our with our lives and with our professional lives. We're very happy with what we do. Yeah, exactly. And this has brought us a lot of fulfillment. Yeah, a lot of and a lot of fulfillment, freedom, and joy, and, and freedom. I mean, we just went on a month long vacation. Mm -hmm. If you were to rewind three years, four years from uh, ago, when Veronica was still working as at a court as a corporate lawyer. And I remember, you know, we have family in Colombia. We have a second house in Colombia. Mm -hmm. I mean, at the time we didn't, but still you had a family in Colombia. And it's mm -hmm. like, how, how long, you, what, you get two weeks a year mm -hmm. yeah. at these you corporate get, gigs? Yeah, you don't get more than two weeks. Mm -hmm. When are you going to go that visit was one your of family? The well, that was one of the reasons why I decided to go full time into what we do, into our business. Yeah. It was because Is I to wanted to have the faith. freedom of stay in my country for a month and bring mm -hmm. our kids and have them uh, hang out with my family and yeah, learn and about my culture. Yeah, do things on your terms. Mm -hmm. and do things on my terms. So there's a lot of positive, but I we feel that there's some uh, things that are not as positive that uh, are worth to share. Yeah, and if you're expecting them, if you're just getting started, you'll know how to butt up navigate against those. them, navigate mm -hmm. those problems. And we're also going, not just going to talk about the ugly side of being your own boss, but we're also going to give you hints yeah. and tips and maybe some of the mistakes we made and how mm -hmm. to overcome them as well in this episode. So mm -hmm. it's going to be really fun. The first one, which is funny because right before we sat down to record this episode, we encountered one of these Oof, yeah. and it is the troll. The trolls. The trolls. I'm not talking about those cute dolls from the 90s that made that appearance in one of the Toy Story movies. At the very, It was the intro, I believe, of Toy Story 3 because we just watched it and we're like, the trolls are on the train. Oh, yeah. You, you know the hair? Uh -huh. I'm not talking about those trolls. I'm talking about internet trolls. Yes. Right? Yes. And, and That's one of the things that uh, you're not prepared for. How can you be prepared to just get so much hatred for the work that you are so bravely uh, doing and so much love that you're putting into your content and so much love that you're putting into your business, you just can't believe that there will be haters out there. But they will, they 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 will be. Yeah, and some of them are going to hurt pretty bad. Rite of passage. In our, it's a rite of passage, and I love it though because I think one of the greatest things about starting your own business, and definitely one of the greatest things about content creation, is the the way that it forces you into self improvement, like nothing else I've ever experienced in life. 
And it's amazing because you you get to this fork in the road constantly where it's like you can either improve yourself or you can just quit the whole thing altogether, mm-hmm, yeah. you know? Like <laughs> yeah. it's it's amazing. So for me personally, the ones that cut really deep, the ones that I allowed to hurt early mm-hmm. on. Mm-hmm. And there's one in particular. I we haven't I don't know if we've talked about it <laughs> publicly or not, but there was uh I don't even have to necessarily mm-hmm say what the comment was or anything like that. But I think it was on a, I, it was on our Apple podcast comment review of our podcast, our original podcast, the Pod Sound School podcast, just basically saying that we were a sham, that Studio Steve didn't know anything. I went a little nutso, mm-hmm. if you remember. I went crazy. It was so hard for me. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I wound up finding who the guy was because he was, <laughs> he, I guess, if you're going to like leave, if you're going to be a troll, like don't have the name of, don't have your <laughs> name actually be your username on <laughs> iTunes, you know, because I was able to find him and his wife. I started sending messages to both of them and you're, you're like, Steven, that is not okay. Anyway, he removed the comment though. So my craziness is like, oh man, don't F with Studio After you Steve. you started messaging your, his like wife. If you, if you leave a bad comment to the Pod Sound School, Studio Steve will stalk you. <laughs> He'll stalk you. But I anyway, know. what wound up happening after that initial, like, I don't know what kind of response that was, is it actually brought up all sorts of insecurities I have, and I was able to deal with those and then move forward. And since then, and a few others of those trolls, I, I can honestly say that it just doesn't even phase me at all anymore. No, no, no. Well, there's something that I learned in uh, a book that I read from Maria Forleo. Yeah, Marie Forleo. Marie, not mm-hmm. Maria. Oh, Maria. You can call Maria, Maria. Mercedes. <laughs> I think she'll forgive you. Marie Forleo is that um, something that you need to ask yourself is like whether the person who are leaving the nasty comment has a body of work that you admire. Yeah. And most of the time you're going to like click on the profile or maybe uh, there's a way for you to find out. They have like zero followers. Mm-hmm. They they are not creating any content. The, they they don't have a body of work that you admire. They're more than likely they're underperforming mm-hmm. because the truth is that high performing people whose opinion you would respect mm-hmm. and that you should actually take their constructive criticism, they simply don't have the time. They don't have to the be time. leaving they're comments busy. on your work. Yes. They're busy people. Just think about it when you're busy focusing on your goals, uh, focusing like there's just so m- our to do list is like will cover years. Mm-hmm. And so when do we have the time to yeah. sit down and write a nasty comment? So right before we sat down to record this episode, we got a massive troll mm-hmm. uh, on one of my videos on YouTube. Yeah. And it didn't. All I did was hide user from channel. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, Veronica's so... favorite thing she likes to do is just say, thanks. <laughs> they so, leave like a three paragraph comment about a piece of our yeah. content. And instead, yeah. which, by the way, I read <laughs> I read all the comments. And yes. if the comment it's it's worth you have to read them and make the judgment is this comment attacking my character or is it saying something that is valuable for me to apply in the future to my content maybe there is a better way for me to uh, deliver the information or there's some kind of thing that i should improve and for those i just spend the time to to reply and be like thank you yeah thank you for pointing that out i'm gonna keep that uh in mind for my next piece of content Mm -hmm. but if you know sometimes i've gotten like hate letters yeah (laughs) there are pages and pages and to that i just reply thanks yeah thanks Thanks. Yeah. And there there are other creators who we've spoken to that I know have this problem. One in particular that we interviewed early on has an assistant that just fields all that, mm-hmm. that responds to the comments. And if there's anything important, in it, uh, as well as emails, mm-hmm. if there's anything important that needs to be elevated to her, escalated to her, mm-hmm. uh, then her assistant take care takes care of that because... She was someone who's just too sensitive mm-hmm. and that it, they just, it did just cut deep and it's okay if you're that type of person. And if you really maybe care too much about what people think or those comments hurt mm-hmm. you too much, then maybe just ignore them all together. Yeah. And there are ways that you can do this, uh, on the, the platforms. There are many different ways that you can uh, protect yourself from nasty comments on Instagram. I know that mm-hmm. uh, right now, that a few weeks ago, Instagram rolled a new, a new feature that you can add certain words like I hate or words that um, point to spam mm-hmm. and highlight those words. So every time somebody tries to comment using those words, then 
uh, the comment that doesn't appear on your post. On your post or your Same chat. you can do on on YouTube. You can you do can, that on YouTube You can as hide well. comments. You can block people. You, yeah. There are many different. You are the the captain of the of the ship. Yeah. You don't have to put up with shit being thrown at you yeah. and just like taking it and and just giving those people the light. No, yeah. you can control those. You can control those, yeah. And on YouTube is really beautiful when you say hide user from channel. Mm -hmm. They still see as if their comments were posted to your channel, but you don't mm -hmm. and nobody else does yeah. either. And also like immediately after you have gotten a comment like that, just like go uh, somewhere else to get a different energy. Mm -hmm. To get, just come back here. And let me tell yeah. you, you are needed. You are talented. Your content is amazing. Your what you have to share matters. Uh, keep doing it. Mm -hmm. We love you. Yes. Save it. it. Save it and come back to me. Hey, I'm interrupting the episode for a little announcement. You know you have to create content to attract more prospects online, but the whole thing seems daunting and too much to figure out on your own. Which social media platform should I choose? Should I start making videos for IG Reels, TikTok, or YouTube? What skills do I need to learn? What equipment do I need? Or maybe you're considering starting a podcast for your business. And if any of that's the case, we want to invite you to sign up for the waitlist for Smart and Simple Podcasts. Podcasting. It's our first coaching program where we, the Pad Sound School, will be teaching you how to create and launch a professional podcast from scratch. Content marketing so your content is a lead generation machine for your business and different ways to maximize every time you record so you can create micro pieces of content that will go on different social media platforms. We'll be holding your hand through the whole process, meeting weekly with you, making sure that you're not getting left behind. We'll be teaching students and clients about podcast and video production and marketing for four years. Our approach to teaching is straightforward, innovative, and fun. So hurry up and go to podcastingsmart.com slash waitlist to sign up or find the link in the description of this episode. Stop working so hard on your content. Make your content work for you. Now back to the episode. And that is a perfect place to move on to the next big point in this episode. And this actually goes, that last one was more like specific about creating content for the first time, but also mm -hmm. being your own boss. This one's like really being your own boss mm -hmm. or working from home. And that is self-management. Oh boy. So with this, self-management comes all sorts of different things. And we have been discussing a lot about how mindset, and we're going to get into mindset also in this episode as well. I want to get into like scarcity mindset and different things like that mm -hmm. and money mindset, right? So let's let's talk about mindset just for a brief moment as before I get into self-management. And we come from, like I just mentioned about Veronica coming from a corporate law gig and many of us come from corporate positions and so many of us, like very few of us have worked for ourselves our, our whole life. Like, and so we're built in with this, this these mindsets that come from you know, always having to perform according to somebody else's standards, always being judged uh, by our performance, you know, by those certain performance metrics from every different job and all of that. And with that, though, however, becomes this, it's easy to blame your boss, to blame your coworkers, to blame the, the situation of your uh, work of your career, of the career that you chose, of the case that you're on, right? Whatever it is, it's so easy to dodge the responsibility. But when you work for yourself, suddenly, you know, you have to, you wake up and you realize that I'm the problem. I, you know, mm -hmm. all this time I've been blaming my boss, but it's me that has the limiting beliefs. Mm -hmm. It's me that has the bad habits and the hangups and mm -hmm. procrastinates and wants to take too many naps. Mm -hmm. And with self-management, you now all of a sudden have to worry about setting your own schedule, organizing all of your own shit uh, and your own mindset. And again, now becoming even better of a person. Yeah. You're, yeah, you're not going to have anybody to get mad at you if you clock in uh, an hour late. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you make too many trips to the bathroom and you take forever, then you're not, nobody's going to get mad at you. Mm -hmm. uh, so all of those things and... And then on top of like figuring out all this uh, online business thing, like growing your business, running a business, being a CEO, 
then you have to deal with your personal stuff too, which is getting in the way of you growing your business as well. Yeah. So you have to put in the work of uh, personally and you have to put in the work uh, for your business. And it can be like pretty overwhelming sometimes. Yeah, it can be really overwhelming. Incredibly. But also like I incredibly fulfilling and too. rewarding as well. Mm -hmm. And I think the biggest discoveries that or, or the discoveries that I've been making recently on a personal note with this is this idea of when you're talking about negative mindsets, right? As uh, perfectionism is a big one, but then also the idea of imposter syndrome is huge. It's and, and all of us struggle with that. And then self-sabotage is another big one too. So we're always like self-sabotaging ourselves for whatever reason. And usually it comes from a, a place of our self-esteem or our self-worth or, or our own insecurities. There's also like a thinking error, I think, in play a lot of times that states like if I'm not going to be a successful entrepreneur or successful business owner until those things don't exist anymore. And now it's, I'm realizing that it's, it's actually those things will always exist. And even when you have a billion dollars in the bank, you're still going to have the self-sabotaging and the negative mindset stuff there with you. And you still just push through that. You mm -hmm. still just continue to- You get shit done. Yeah. And you continue to put out content. You continue to develop new products. You continue to collect data and you get better at sort of balancing out that side of yourself. And then also, I think importantly, giving space for that. Mm -hmm. So an example of that would be in our own content creation, we are batch recording a bunch of podcast episodes right now in this moment, and we change outfits every time and we try, we're trying to record four podcast episodes in one shebang so that that gives us a month of podcast episodes. And before it, just with like all of this self stuff that I'm going through on a personal level, I had to give myself space and unfortunately Veronica had to be present for it to basically just have a meltdown and a freak out or an identity crisis. But if I were to compare that identity crisis or that or that freak out of stress to uh, other freak outs that I've had in the past, it's it's progressing and it's getting in a, toward a better way uh, in self development that it didn't have to destroy the day, it didn't have to keep the work from happening, it didn't have to make any of that be a problem, you know. Um, and that has to do with taking responsibility for what it is, evaluating the situation. And and moving forward as the imperfect human that you are, mm -hmm. um, and and that's all would have been something at my corporate gigs or in all the gigs where I was working for other people or at studios or on film sets or whatever would have never held that mirror up to myself. Yeah, no. And the freakouts that I would have had would have been in private. I would not have given them space. I wouldn't have honored them for what they are, for what they're trying to tell me about myself, and so. All of the ugly sides of owning your own business are the, be I think, also happen to be the most beautiful side. The most beautiful side, yeah. Yeah, that has to do with personal growth and, and also connects you to humanity and everything else. So that's honestly most of what I think the ugly side of having a business is, is all of that mindset stuff because... There wasn't much more that I could think of. And I don't know if you could just off the top of your head think of anything else, but it really does have to do with the scarcity mindset, mm -hmm. paranoia, uh, negative money mindset, right? Mm -hmm. And I'll quickly just say on the negative money mindset, I think uh, when you think about CEOs that are big and powerful, I think that first we almost immediately go to like the evil ones, mm -hmm. right? And it's like, well, they never worked on their selves. And so maybe actually I should stay a piece of shit asshole my whole life because that's actually the secret to success. And that, that <laughs> couldn't be farther from the truth. And so there's all those kind of months, my, money mindsets that money come, more money comes with more responsibility. Uh, that's going to creep in there. More money is evil, right? Mm -hmm. the, all those kind of negative money mindsets that we have. But... To finish this episode off, I think the other big one when it comes to being your own boss, and especially as the creator economy becomes even bigger than it is. I mean, even this year, it's huge. And um, as we all kind of continue to move towards this sort of virtual world that we live in is social media. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. And the fact that social media can suck you dry mm -hmm. emotionally and spiritually. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And you're more sensitive to social media than I am or than that I admit to be. Mm -hmm. And then um, 
it's it's tricky because um we work on social media we have to show up we have to post content we have to track metrics uh, we have to be on top of trends and 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 see what's performing and what's not performing so and that is just it's very hard to filter the things that are good for you and the things that are not good for you yeah and sometimes it can hinder on your creativity it can hinder on your motivation it can like sent you um uh spiral down, <laughs> down the, what it, identity crisis Ident road. yeah identity crisis or the identity crisis rabbit hole yeah uh -huh. and then yeah like comparanoia like comparing yourself with with other creators and or other online business owners in your space and just mm -hmm. feeling like you're not doing enough that's one of the things that i that i struggle with is like i'm not doing enough and like complaining about me that not doing enough is going to make me do more. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. how is that even? <laughs> mm -hmm. And it's just like, and I've seen the impact that it has on my mental health sometimes that it just puts me in a very negative mood now that I talk about it. Mm -hmm. And it just puts me in a, in a place of despair. Like, I don't, I'm not contributing anything. Yeah. We will never... Uh, get to to uh, uh, to achieve the goals that we have. Yes. we're all over the place. We're failing. Mm -hmm. I get all of this negative thoughts in my head, and I think that all comes from the same place that we can all connect with, which is this feeling in our in our core, in the middle of our of our being, which is this desperate desire to matter. To, mm -hmm. to mean something to, to the mean world. Something to and the when world. we see all these people on social media that seem like they mean a lot and they have all these followers, then mm -hmm. that al almost just makes us feel inferior, like we don't mean anything. And mm -hmm. that's where the comparanoia comes from. Again, from this either a bruised ego or a low self esteem or any of these old things. All of that stuff that we've talked about, again, is only a luxury. And yes, it is a luxury of owning your own business or being your own boss mm -hmm. because none of that stuff is going to come out when you are just an employee of no, somebody else. No, no, definitely not because you just go home and forget about work. Yeah. As long as you're getting the paycheck is you get the paycheck and you do your damn thing. Mm -hmm. And you know, as far as and improving, you blame your caca boss. Yeah. You blame your caca boss. You improve your own performance. You ask for a raise the way you need to for work. But, mm -hmm. and you know, I could, you could obviously argue that if you want to, you know, go up higher in the ranks of your, of whatever gig you have that yes, also self-improvement would, obviously be what you should do there as well too, but it's in corporate gig sales, whatever it is. Yes. Taking care of your body and your mind and all of that fun stuff is going to help you perform better and get raises and get those uh, promotions that you're after as well. Mm -hmm. But I think that that wraps it up for this episode. And, I think so too. And I really think... the big takeaway is just to give space for your human parts mm -hmm. and to believe in yourself and to be your number one fan Mm -hmm. And and to allow yourself to be human and allow yourself to have freakouts. And also something that it's been helping me, helping us a lot, is just to spend those few moments, those very first few moments of your day with yourself, checking in with yourself. How are your emotions? Setting up your intentions. Maybe working out. I love working out in the mornings mm -hmm. because that will put me in 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 the mood. It will give me that boost of energy and confidence that I need. And focus on your on your to do list on the things that you want to uh, accomplish for the day. And those little deposits, daily deposits, will get you where you want to be. Absolutely. There's no question if you stay consistent with little daily deposits, you could call them MITs or most important tasks, mm -hmm. like a big list of all the tasks you have to get done and pick one of those tasks to do every day. It, you, it is without question, you will go places with your business. Yeah. Also surround yourself with mentors, with, with people oh, who would bring you like that positive energy, who would teach you uh, things that are that are useful for you, that mm -hmm. will put you in the mood, that will give you um, a lot of energy. And and, and th that's what we do. We read a lot of books. I, mm -hmm. I listen to podcasts too, and that will just like send, will center me and will put me in a positive vibe, so yeah. to speak. Yeah. And with that, any. Don't forget to follow me 
on uh, social media. Mm -hmm. I am on Instagram at Pod Sound School. Yep. And you can find me on Twitter at Pod Sound School. Also, again, this is a video podcast that you can watch on either YouTube or Spotify. And it's an audio podcast available on all the podcast directories. Make sure you follow the pod, leave a review about it, all of that fun stuff. It really does make a huge difference in our lives. And that's something that we could easily do an episode about the beautiful aspects of this content creation, this being your own boss. And that is you. You are the beautiful yeah. aspect of that. And even though we talked about how we've come to ignore or just give our little thanks replies to our negative comments, the positive comments mm -hmm. make our lives. They, yeah. they shape our, the, it's just why we're doing it. They keep us going. So mm -hmm. uh, if you're out there and you're a listener and you're a fan and you've been uh, following our content for a while, don't be a stranger. Let us know that you exist. Tell us a little bit about your story. We'd love to get to know more about you. And we'll see you on the next episode. Bye.